from the first moment you set eyes on the world, you're constantly capturing images. Whatever you see, be it the faces of the people that you meet, the places that you visit, your favorite works of art, or even this video you're watching right now, they don't happen out there independent from you, they are created inside your brain. All of your memories and your dreams, and most of your thoughts, are mostly made up of images. Yet, because this visual perception of ours accompanies us from the moment we are born, we take it for granted. So let's take a quick tour of how those images are created inside our brains. I'm Achilles Kokinos, and you're watching Noetic Method. If somebody asked you, how do you see, what would you respond? Well, it certainly has something to do with light and how it interacts with our eyes, and the way this interaction is processed in our brains. I would say this is pretty good for a start, but let's dig a bit deeper. First of all, vision seems to be the primary tool with which you make sense of the world, and all the other senses seem to be just ancillary. In fact, this is what neuroscience shows us, that up to 30% of the cerebral cortex is dedicated to vision, with all the other senses occupying 7 or 8% each. But how does vision come about? Well, in any given setting, natural or artificial light bounces off of objects, and that changes its wavelength accordingly. If some of that light strikes your eye, then it is inverted and focused on the back surface of your eye, called the retina. This is where something crazy happens. Your brain has figured out a way to translate light into a language it can understand, the language of electrical signals. And it manages that with the help of a specific kind of cell, called photoreceptors. Imagine a summit between two world leaders who cannot understand each other's language. They would, of course, have an army of translators with them to help them convey and understand each other's points as accurately as possible. Well, that's exactly what photoreceptors do. They assist in the communication between your brain and the world. There are millions of photoreceptors all over the retina and they come in two forms. First are the rods, which are mainly concentrated on the periphery and are mainly used in situations with dim light, like during the night. Then there are cones, which are more concentrated in the center of the retina and are mainly used during the day. Cones are also responsible for discerning different colors. Some cones respond to light of shorter wavelength, causing us to see blue, others to light of medium wavelength, which we see as green, and others still to light of longer wavelengths, which we see as red. The fact that cones are mainly concentrated near the center of the retina means that we cannot easily see colors on the sides of our visual field. Try this. Take three pens of different colors, or any other three similar objects of different colors. Choose one of them without seeing which color you chose, and bring that object slowly from the side of your visual field towards the center. Try to guess while the object is on your side which color you chose and you will see that most of the time your guess will be wrong. The main highway through which the message will reach the brain is the optic nerve, a bundle of nerve axons which carries the information of each eye towards the opposite side of the brain. So the left side of your brain processes the right side of your visual field and vice versa. Continuing the journey, the message of light will make some very important pit stops along your brain until it reaches the main area where visual information is processed, the primary visual cortex. This is where something really interesting happens, because contrary to what you might think, your brain doesn't process images as a whole, like a camera would. When you watch an episode of Rick and Morty, there is not a single place in your brain where the image of Rick is processed. Instead, the image is built little by little through different areas of the brain. Your visual system works as a hierarchy, and every step along the way becomes more complex than the previous one. Starting from the bottom, the first areas of the visual cortex process lines and edges. The next ones respond to corners, complex shapes, colors, and so on. The more we move up, the more elements are added to the picture. Okay, so let's take a moment. Take a look around you and grab the nearest object you can find. Now, that's a pretty easy task. But in order for it to come about, your brain has to do all kinds of different calculations. It first has to recognize the object and separate it from the background. Then it has to pinpoint its exact location in space and its distance from you. And then it has to complete the visual motor task of grabbing it by being precise 
and not knocking it over. This is achieved by two distinct neuronal pathways in the brain, which researchers call the what pathway and the how pathway. The what pathway is important for recognizing and identifying objects, what we're looking at. The how pathway is concerned with spatial relationships, where everything is and how we can move to reach it or avoid it. People who have suffered damage on the how pathway have a great difficulty orienting their bodies in space. They cannot easily grab objects or they bump into them because they cannot realize where exactly they are. People with damage on the what pathway, on the other hand, cannot recognize objects that are shown to them and depending on the sign of the damage, they might even be unable to recognize faces. Imagine that for a moment, seeing the faces of all the familiar people in your life, but perceiving them as abstract, unrecognizable shapes, or even worse, as different objects. The case from Oliver Sacks' book, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, falls under this category. In his book, Sachs describes the examination of a patient of his, who after having shown peculiar visual deficits, like confusing his foot for his shoe, decides to leave the doctor's office. He started to look around for his hat. He reached out his hand and took hold of his wife's head, tried to lift it off to put it on. He had apparently mistaken his wife for a hat. His wife looked as if she was used to such things. This impairment in face recognition is called prosopagnosia, and given the evolutionary importance of recognizing people's faces, it is one of the weirdest visual disorders. In fact, remember when I told you that there is not a specific place in your brain where the image of Rick is processed? This is not true for faces. They get to have their own specialized places in the brain where they are processed, kind of like their own VIP suites. Also, images of places and bodies get the special treatment too. All the rest kinds of images follow the typical route of visual processing like plebs and the difference shows in the way those types of images are formed. When you recognize an ordinary object like a bicycle, you break it down into its constituent parts wheels, handlebar, body. Whereas with recognizing faces, you cannot follow the same method. You don't break down a face into the eyes, the mouth, the cheeks, etc. Instead, you process it as a whole. And this divide between holistic processing and the processing of individual parts of the object seems to be an attribute of how we perceive different stimuli. And this is where our quick tour of how light becomes images in your brain ends. Now we just touched the surface and there are many interesting things we didn't cover in this video, which I will surely touch on future ones. So if this video pleased your visual cortex, consider liking and subscribing and I will see you in the next one.